Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. So with the popularity of self-hosting applications and at the same time the popularity of public cloud, there's a lot of self-hosters out there that are starting to self-host their own, well, let's just call them cloud applications. And one good example of that that I run into uh, probably a year or two ago was a product called Only Office. And I kind of describe only Office as being a web-based version of LibreOffice. And it's also kind of my view of how you can self-host your own private cloud version of Office and take that as being somewhat similar to Office 365. So let's go take a look at only Office. Here's my web-based login page for my OnlyOffice instance. And I'm gonna go up here to my Bitwarden and sign on to my OnlyOffice instance. And then I click sign in and it logs me in. From the main page, we have a documents option, projects, CRM, mail, people, and a control panel. And then we have a choose menu up here. We have documents, projects, CRM, people, mail, uh, control panel again, talk, calendar, and uh, news feeds, as well as settings and other services. So this is very similar in concept to uh, perhaps a next cloud, but a little bit more focused on just actually creating and sharing documents. So if we come to the upper right hand corner, I'm gonna click administrator and I'm gonna go to my administrator profile on the administrator's profile, you have the option to invite users to your portal where we specify um, which uh, people we want to invite and then they end up with a username and a password once they receive an invitation to your portal. So let's head over to one of the functions. For example, go over to the documents function. Once I click on documents here, uh, we have several sample documents. So, for example, we've got um, only Office um, sample document, which is kind of like your Microsoft Word. Uh, we have the um, a template here, which is uh, DocX, kind of an Excel type thing. And then we have a sample presentation, so uh, sort of like PowerPoint. And then uh, they've got a video sample here, and they have a... Um, mp3 sample audio a pdf and then uh, i guess uh, another sample spreadsheet here so as an example let's go ahead and go into the um, word type application and you can see here that it brings up a sample um, document and it uh, more or less has the ribbon format which is the latest interface that we have in uh, in Word and so we have all of our various menus our home menu our insert menu our draw menu and layout and so on keeping in mind that this is a private cloud-based application I have it hosted inside of an Incus container so I can go over to the file and I can say download as because normally, keep in mind, it's going to be storing this document inside of the container. But I could say download this document as a docx and it'll go ahead and put it where I want it. So I can just go ahead and say put it in my downloads folder and go ahead and save that off. Now in my downloads folder of my desktop, I can go ahead and click that sample document and it goes ahead and brings it up but this time it's coming up in my LibreOffice that is running from my desktop and so it looks like it has all of the same data all of the same format associated with it so my thoughts are that only office being web-based you can pretty much reproduce the capability of having a private cloud as opposed to public cloud based office environment where people can edit and exchange documents. So let's see how to install only office. 
If you've been watching the channel lately, you know that I've been working on a series on Incas containers. And so this one's no different. We're going to go ahead and implement our only office instance inside of an Incas container. And if you don't know what Incas is, make sure and go over and watch the videos in my Incas playlist, particularly the one that is entitled Incas Containers Step-by-Step. -step. So here I have an Incas launch images colon Ubuntu forward slash 2204 only office and then I'm using the default profile and in my particular case I'm using the VLAN 80 profile which puts this on a different VLAN and if you don't know what VLANs are I have a number of videos that explain uh, what VLANs are and then I'm adding something to the Incas command line that I've used before in LexD but I haven't discussed it in Incas yet and what I'm doing is a limits.memory equals 8192 megabytes, or otherwise known as 8 gigabytes. Now, that does, this does not automatically have the container use 8 gigabytes of memory. It just sets 8 gigabytes of memory as being a cap for this particular container. And I've discovered that this will host a couple of users and run pretty well with this. And then finally, I have a limits.cpu.allowance is 30%. And that means use up to 30% of the Incas uh, host CPU. And then boot.autostart equals to true means that when the Incas server boots, then go ahead and start the um, only office instance. So that went ahead and started that. If I do a Incas list, we can now see that we have an only office instance and it's running at a local address of 192.168.80.70. Let's go ahead and connect to our only office container with the command Incas shell only office and we're logged into that container. The first thing I want to do after creating any new container is to take all of the updates and I do that with a apt update ampersand ampersand apt upgrade and I'm going to add the dash y on the end so that it doesn't prompt me. That will go off and perform the updates. In this case, it didn't have to perform any updates. However, it did say that the following packages have been kept back and it indicates D package. Now, an interesting thing is that in Linux, if you ever see the message that says a package is kept back, what it means is it means there's a conflict in dependencies that will be resolved in a future update. And this is nothing to worry about. Now that our container is updated, I want to go ahead and install two programs. One is the open SSH server, which is what we need in order to be able to SSH into this machine. And the second one is curl. Let's go ahead and create a user account on this system. And so I'm going to do an add user Scott and I'll provide Scott a password and verify that password for Scott. And then I'm going to do user mod dash A capital G pseudo Scott, which puts Scott in the pseudo group and allows Scott to perform privileged commands. Next, I'm going to do an SU space dash space Scott. The dash means move me over to Scott's home folder. And in fact, when I do a PWD, not only am I on the Scott account and signed on as Scott, and you can see that with the prompt that says Scott, and Scott is logged into the system known as only Office, which happens to be an Incas container. But that I'm also at the home directory of Scott, which is in forward slash home forward slash Scott. Let's go ahead and download the installation script for OnlyOffice, and it's a file called 
workspace-install.sh and we did that with the wget command. And now if we do an ls, you can see workspace-install.sh. Now when we download an, a file that's going to be executable like the script file, we have to give it execute privilege before it will run. And so we're going to do a chmod plus x, meaning add execute privilege to it, workspace-install.sh. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and sudo su to move over to the root privilege. And I'm still in Scott's home directory. And now in order to execute this script, I'm simply going to do a dot slash workspace dash install dot sh. When the script starts, one of the first things it asks for is if you want to install it with Docker. And I've done several tests here, and inside of an Incas container, it doesn't seem to be working very well with Docker. And notably, the problem is that it has a problem with C groups, which can occur. So I'm going to go ahead and say, no, I don't want it to install with Docker. I just want to go ahead and perform a native installation of OnlyOffice on the Incas container called OnlyOffice. Due to the magic of live video, the installation that took about 30 minutes has been compressed down to an amazing speed. Your mileage may vary. So let's go ahead and do an IP space A. And we notice that we have a address of 192.168.80.70, which is the address we should be using to contact our only office web server. And if we go ahead and paste in that address and hit enter, we get to the only office portal. And here we are asked to type in a password. So I'll go ahead and type in a password and verify that password. And then you can set up your language and you can also set up uh, your time zone. And then they also ask you for a registration email. And then we can say we accept the terms and go ahead and continue. At this point, you come up to the main screen and we have a completed installation of OnlyOffice community server. In order to offer this out to the public internet, you're going to need to add a record at your DNS provider. In this particular case, I'm going to Cloudflare and I'm adding a record which will be a CNAME record and the name that I'm going to add is only office. And then I'm going to make the target scottabyte.net and I'm going to turn off the proxy and go ahead and save that record. The next step I have to do is to go over to my instance of Nginx proxy manager and add a proxy host. In this case I'm going to add only office dot and I'm going to hit the tab to go ahead and enter that in. And then I'm going to add the address for my OnlyOffice instance. And as a reminder, if we go back over here, that was 192.168.80.70. So I'm going to type in 192.168.80.70. And then over here in the forward port, I'm putting port 80. I'm going to turn on WebSocket support and block common exploits and then head over to the SSL tab and go ahead and say that I want to request a new certificate and I accept the 
um, agree to the terms of service for Let's Encrypt and I click Save. Now it goes out to Let's Encrypt and goes ahead and requests a certificate for onlyoffice.scottabyte.net. And now that that's been added, I'm going to scroll down and find my onlyoffice.scottabyte.net, which is right here below my production version of that same item. I'm going to click Edit, go over to SSL and say Force SSL and do another save. At this point, I'm really done with Nginx Proxy Manager, and I can go over here and type in onlyoffice.scottabyte.net, and it will go ahead and come to the login screen, and my registration email, as you remember, was vmsman at gmail.com, and then I have my password down here, and when I enter it, it will go ahead and sign on. And that's basically all there is to installing OnlyOffice Community Server. Here's a nice view of our Lex Console OnlyOffice instance running as an Incus container. And you notice that it takes 4.8 gigs of memory and it looks like 6.6 .6 gigabytes of disk space. And overall, for what it's providing, that's really not too bad. Only Office Community Server is a nice option if what you want to do is offer a private cloud document management system to multiple users in your organization or folks that you serve out on the public internet. In any case, um, that's pretty much it for today, so please subscribe and like to the channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell, and we'll see you next time.